Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this second lecture on B. R. Ambedkar. In the previous lecture, we have discussed his education, his personal life, his political engagement and many of his political campaign to uh, fight against uh, the caste oppression or caste discrimination and many satyagrahas to assert the Dalits or untouchables access to public places like tanks, temples or wells. And also we have discussed his differences uh, on the question of caste uh, from the reforms movement or the uh, political position being taken by Congress or its leadership including Gandhi. And then we have also discussed his views on partition. Now today uh, in this lecture we will focus his views on caste by looking at his text Annihilation of Caste. And on the basis of this text, we will try to understand many of the um, insights or the critical assessment that he provides uh, about the caste and caste as a problem to form a society or a nation which is based on the principle of fraternity or which allow uh, mutual respect among the fellow, uh, fellow beings. So, how caste and caste based discrimination plays a role of hindrance or impediments in forging such relationship which is based on the question of uh, or, uh, conception of liberty, equality, fraternity or mutual respect. So, uh, we will study uh, uh, these from this text and also we will try to uh, understand uh, his difference from Gandhi and uh, the role of such differences was not uh, a kind of antithetical uh, to each other, but uh, they also shared a lot of common vision or similar visions for the future, future of India that uh, we will also discuss by concluding uh, this lecture. So, to begin with his views on caste and uh, the two quotation I have cited here is from the original text he wrote in 1936. Uh, which is titled as Annihilation of Caste. So, uh, in this text, uh, he quoted Buddha and writes, no truth as truth and untruth as untruth. This is the toughest task for any individual political activist or a thinker to identify, to understand or to recognize truth as truth or untruth as untruth. So, uh, this is the intellectual task or responsibility of any individual to understand or to examine or to identify the real problems, uh, the uh, root cause of such problems and how to eradicate uh, such problems. So, Ambedkar do not have a kind of philosophical or uh, uh, philosophical in a sense of merely speculative exercise about uh, the caste issue and how to reform it and how to uh, solve the caste and untouchable problems. He was uh, having a very rational uh, approach to first understand the caste and what sustain the caste, what is the root cause of uh, the reproduction of this caste based discrimination in everyday life and what could be the effective solution to the caste, uh, caste system. So, he was uh, then not a kind of mysterious or a kind of skeptic, skeptical approach towards the social problem. So, he uh, uh, in uh, my assessment uh, by this quotation mean the uh, responsibility of a thinker or an individual um, uh, political activist is to understand what is truth 
and understand it as a uh, truth or untruth as untruth. And the second which comes more uh, closer to his approach towards a lot of social and political problems in India and also the solution that he was providing from the Drummond quotation that is he that will not reason is a bigot and he that cannot reason is a fool and he that dare not reason is a slave. So, the reason or rationality is the very basis of thought or understanding for Ambedkar and he categorized different kind of individuals on the basis of their capability or their use of reason among the bigot or a fool or a slave and um, therefore, in his uh, understanding of social problems or social challenges in India, he wanted to have a rational or uh, logical approach to understanding or identifying the problem and then providing a rational or logical solution to overcome it or to forge a relationship which will allow India to uh, develop or emerge as a nation based on uh, the principle of fraternity and equality. So, the question of region remains very crucial to his political and social thought. Now, if we come to this text on annihilation of caste, this text was prepared basically as a lecture or as a address to the annual conference of Jat Path Turak Mandal in Punjab. So, in 1936, Ambedkar was invited by the Jat Path Turak Mandal, a Hindu caste reform organization based in Punjab to deliver the presidential address at their annual conference. When Ambedkar sent them the text of his address, the invitation was withdrawn following disagreements over certain passages in the text. Now, this gives us a sense of differences even among those who were fighting for social reforms fighting for removing uh, untouchability or to solve the caste uh, uh, system or to, ered, uh, to remove or to fight the caste system or caste based discrimination. So, there are different layers even among, among those who were trying to fight for uh, social uh, justice, uh, especially those who were fighting for uh, reforming the caste or fighting untouchability. So, this Jad Pathaturak is one of such uh, Hindu uh, social organization committed to social reform, but they withdraw their uh, support to the Ambedkar because of certain, dif uh, uh, certain passages where this organization differ from, uh, from Ambedkar and that gives us a sense of the sharpness of the uh, differences between Ambedkar and the Congress and many other organizations also committed to social and economic reforms as uh, also they were fighting for the political, uh, political freedom. So, this uh, um, invitation was withdrawn. However, uh, Ambedkar went uh, ahead and published this address which is entitled as Annihilation of Caste and this becomes one of the most influential works on caste system in India. Ambedkar wrote many things and here one needs to emphasize on this point annihilation. So, the Ambedkar is not talking about reforming caste system, he is talking about annihilating, just uh, doing away with this whole system of uh, caste. So, therefore, his uh, response is very different from the Congress and the Gandhian and many other organizations such as Jat Pat Turak Mandal about caste reform. So, for Ambedkar, uh, the issue or the objective is not just to reform the caste but to annihilate the caste and without such annihilation there is no possibility of forging a relationship based on fraternity or mutual respect or equality. So, uh, he was so dissatisfied with the contemporary activities of Hindu social and religious reforms movement that in the preface of this work he wrote and that gives us the sense of his anguish or his anger against not just the outdated or exploitative system of caste, but also the re reforms that was being undertaken by many organizations or activists. So, in this preface of annihilation of caste, he writes, what can anyone expect from a relationship so tragic as the relationship between the reforming sect of caste Hindus and the self-respecting sect of the untouchables. Now, this point one needs to understand the relationship between the reforming sect of the caste Hindus and the self 
respecting sect of untouchables, where the farmers have no desire to alienate their orthodox fellows and later have no alternative but to insist upon reform being carried out. So, uh, this gives us the real sharp confrontation between two set of uh, social reform movement. One is led by caste Hindus trying to reform the caste and yet not willing to alienate their orthodox uh, uh, orthodox elements. So, uh, you might have heard about um, the initial decades of uh, Indian renaissance, where there is emphasis on um, social reforms, religious reforms, gender reforms or providing education to the women, uh, reform in the family, but these are not extended to reform the whole structure of uh, caste, which reproduces uh, differences, which is exploitative or which uh, subjugate or which exploit and oppress the vast number of untouchables. Now, uh, to this kind of uh, this set of social reforms, Ambedkar was saying that their reform is not to uh, to to reform the family or to reform uh, this uh, 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 the system, but to assert which is about the self-respecting sect of the untouchable. So, the assertion of self-respect or dignity or fighting for the self-respect and dignity that is very different from the reformist or a kind of reformist approach where orthodoxy continue to be practiced or to be uh, uh, included in this um, uh, approach or in, in their movement for social reforms. So, Ambedkar was uh, clearly uh, distinguishing between these two set of uh, reformers, where one is about reforming the family or caste that concerns uh, uh, their uh, lives or their collective uh, self. But the other hand, the uh, movement that was being um, uh, led by Ambedkar and many organizations, which is about fighting for this self-respect. So, the question of reform to contain or to continue with the orthodox elements or to include the orthodoxy, not to alienate them, uh, that is being practiced by many organizations or uh, groups. On the other hand, Ambedkar was uh, uh, promoting or leading a movement or identifying the movement which is about asserting the self-respect, fighting for the self-respect and dignity and therefore, the two is uh, often at loggerhead with um, with each other and Ambedkar is focusing more towards this social reforms. At this point, one also needs to understand that when we were fighting for the uh, political independence and I have uh, been referring to this again and again in my previous lecture, that there is a kind of um, uh, shift in our anti-colonial struggle, where we have started uh, from social religious reforms movement. But then uh, the priority was shifted to political independence and political freedom first and uh, then it was uh, 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 being thought about thought out by many uh, leaders or groups that political freedom can also be uh, achieved first and we should all come together to fight for our political freedom the social reforms and other things can we can uh, tackle later on once we achieve the independence. But many people or Ambedkar in uh, the next lecture when we will discuss his views on uh, liberal democracy and constitutional morality, we will uh, see that how he continue to argue and caution the constitution maker that political independence or political democracy without social and economic uh, democracy will be meaningless, it will not uh, work for long. And uh, so, many, um, many uh, leaders and groups were arguing about simultaneous or continuous uh, focus on or uh, fighting for the social reforms or the social hierarchy that was there. So, here in this slide, one gets the sense that for Ambedkar, the uh, objective is not just to reform and continue to include the orthodoxy and orthodox element in the society, but to annihilate, but 
uh, to remove this whole uh, eradicate the whole system of uh, caste and caste based discrimination. So, in annihilation of caste, Ambedkar probably for the first time raised many profound questions about the caste system or regarding the caste system. The caste system is governing principle of Hindu society. So, every sphere of life from birth to death in social to economic to religious to culture to political life of Hindu society is by and large governed by the caste and these castes are unequal in ranks and these inequalities deeply disturb Ambedkar and he himself was subjected to such discrimination and humiliation based on caste discrimination. So, he was deeply disturbed by such differences or humiliation and that compelled him to strongly criticize Hindu society and also he gradually develop critique of Hindu religion as such. So, for him Hindu religion or Hindu society is a Sikh society in many ways and it is interesting that when many people argue about the uh, continuous um, existence of Hindu civilization for millennia, for Ambedkar that is not heroic. If society which cannot uh, treat its own fellow uh, members with respect, with dignity and uh, continue to uh, reproduce differences and treat others with contempt, that kind of existence for Ambedkar is simply uh, um, uh, disgusting or not acceptable and certainly not something which one can uh, celebrate. So, he gradually developed his uh, criticism and later on he as we have discussed in our previous lecture converted to Buddhism because of his uh, hope or any hope that he might have had about reforms or um, uh, uh, reforms within the Hindu religion to eradicate or annihilate caste, uh, he uh, considered or he uh, completely uh, lost the faith uh, of any reform certainly after the Hindu code will controversy or the conservatism or orthodoxy and its domination on the polity, society and economy uh, of uh, uh, India that he uh, later on converted to uh, Buddhism and he many uh, uh, from 1930s onwards itself developed a kind of distance or a kind of uh, um, critique to this whole um, religious edifice of Hinduism and continuously said that I was born a Hindu, but I will not die as a Hindu and that remains continuously. But before doing that, he of course, studied many religion including Sikhism, Christianity, uh, Jainism and finally, decided to um, convert to Buddhism, which he did in 1956. So, he argued that the graded, in, graded inequality is the normative anchor of the caste system and it restricts the reach of equality to the members of uh, lower caste. So, the inequality or the caste based discrimination that is there in India is graded. That means, the position or the treatment that a member of a particular caste uh, will receive from the member of other caste will depend upon the station of their uh, uh, their community in the hierarchy of the caste, uh, uh, caste system. So, everyone do not suffer the same kind of differences or same kind of humiliation or discriminations. Their humiliation or discrimination or contempt or admiration everything depends on the status of their existence or their group in the caste hierarchy. So, this is a uh, very complex system of graded inequality and therefore, uh, he argued uh, that it is very difficult to unite uh, all the uh, uh, caste to fight against the whole system, because uh, uh, there are uh, contempt, discrimination or um, uh, humiliation at the same time simultaneously they privilege that is associated to such a system also. So, this graded inequality or hierarchy is a normative anchor of caste system, which restricts the reach of equality to the members especially of the lower caste. So, the member of uh, different castes cannot be treated equally because of this graded inequality that pervades all sphere of Hindu society. So, regarding untouchability he said, untouchability is not a simple matter, it is the mother of all poverty 
and lowliness and it has brought us to the abject state we are in today. If we want to raise ourselves out of it, we must undertake this task and we cannot be saved in any other way. It is a task not for our benefit alone, it is also for the benefit of the nation. Now, he is making an interesting point here, where he is saying that or it is also perhaps uh, necessary for us to understand or make a distinction between the caste system or untouchability or the question of untouchability. So, on caste he has written very extensively, but all his fight, of course, there is a kind of um, interconnection between the caste system which leads to untouchability, but the caste system and the caste society uh, is very different from those who are excluded from the hierarchy or the, un the question of untouchability. And throughout his life, he was politically involved in the struggle for uh, fighting for self-respect and dignity of the untouchable. So, for him, this untouchability is the root cause or the mother of all poverty and loneliness among the untouchables and that has brought us to the abject condition where it is very difficult even to consciously understand that one is subjected to humiliation or discrimination. So, one submit voluntarily submit to such humiliation or condition and consider it as their fit as their lot because of their birth. So, from that abject condition of existence to, uh, 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 to uh, rise and to fight for the self dignity or self respect is what uh, Ambedkar was trying to achieve and uh, trying to fight for. So, uh, and that fight for Ambedkar then cannot be led by any other groups or be it Congress or be it colonial government, but the untouchables themselves have to fight for uh, for uh, such a status, such, uh, such self, uh, uh, self respect. So, um, we have to uh, remember that when uh, there was a negotiation between uh, uh, colonial government and Congress and the Muslims, he was trying to create a autonomous or a separate uh, political uh, group of untouchables and to safeguard their interest and their um, uh, protection uh, uh, and for that he was trying to have constantly negotiation and he um, uh, succeeded to a great extent in achieving so, uh, uh, achieving uh, those safeguards for the uh, for the untouchables both from the colonial uh, rule to uh, different round table conference and uh, legislation and also from the constituent assembly where he was the chairman of the drafting committee. So, um, uh, uh, his um, uh, understanding about such fight for uh, uh, self respect and dignity can be achieved only when untouchables fight for themselves. So, there is no uh, expectation from other groups or other uh, organizations fighting on their behalf for their self, self respect. And this movement, this struggle for Ambedkar is not just for their own benefit, but for the benefit of a nation. Because for Ambedkar, the possibility of a political community without social equality and the uh, sense of fellow feeling or fraternity is uh, uh, unsustainable and therefore, he was very uh, skeptical about the uh, prospect of India as a nation which continue to practice such uh, exploitative system as caste or untouchability. So, his criticism on caste system were based on many grounds and he writes, the effect of caste on the ethics of Hindus is simply deplorable. Caste has killed public spirit and this is something about the celebration of India's existence for millennia. But there is a obstruction, there is a restriction of public spirit or coming together to fight uh, when there is a external invasion or there is a common challenges for the whole uh, society, which is uh, prevented, obstructed in India because the practices of caste which does not allow such public spirit or the common uh, 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 solidarity to emerge in the first place. So, he writes the effect of caste on the ethics of Hindus is simply deplorable and caste has killed public spirit. Caste has destroyed the sense of public charity 
कास्ट हैज मेड पब्लिक ओपिनियन इम्पॉसिबल बिकॉज द पब्लिक ओपिनियन इन इंडिया इज लार्जली गवर्न बाय द स्टेशन ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल इन द कास्ट हायरारकी सो देर इज नो नो ट्रू पब्लिक ओपिनियन सो टू सेम ए हिंदू पब्लिक इज हिज कास्ट हिज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज टू हिज कास्ट हिज लॉयल्टी इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड ओनली टू हिज कास्ट वर्चू हैज बिकम कास्ट रिडन and morality has become caste born in such a society how one can think of a public spirit or public opinion which represents the interest of all sections of society where even the morality ethics and virtue is caste driven or uh, caste born so in that kind of society the possibility of emerging a political community which should be sustainable which can uh, continue for long Uh, is uh, uh, something which uh, he was very skeptical about and the criticism that he has um, against the caste system or the hindu religion which sang, uh, which uh, which uh, uh, gives sanction to such practices or because uh, this practice is followed by millions because they believe in the hindu shastra according to which uh, they thought Uh, these practices or the social uh, practices or evil practices of caste and untouchability is justified so uh, he criticized caste system because caste is not just a div- and this is also the rational argument he is putting forward so first of all there are many justification of caste system and one of such justification is that caste is basically uh, division of labor and uh, uh, every society has such division of labor later on it uh, has uh, uh, acquired a degenerated uh, form and that can be reformed but caste system in itself is not wrong because there is a um, uh, division of labor uh, uh, on the basis of uh, caste so he criticized uh, such arguments and um, argue that caste is not just a division of labor but it is also a division of laborers and said it is pity that caste even today has its defenders so as many people were defending the caste system the caste is not merely a division of labor it is also a division of laborers civilized society undoubtedly needs division of labor but in no civilized society is division of labor accompanied by this unnatural division of laborers into water tight compartments so the caste system is not merely a division of laborers which is quite different from division of labor it is a hierarchy in which divisions of laborers are graded one above the other so that's the inequality or the discrimination based on caste is not one to one and one universal which is applicable to everyone it is graded depending upon the state station of one's um, life in this hierarchy one over the other in no other country is the division of labor accompanied by this gradation of laborers so he was very critical of those who are arguing or justifying caste as the basis of division of labor which is good in itself but it has degenerated which one can reform and therefore caste does not need to be annihilated or eradicated so he put forth a strong criticism against the, that view that caste is a division of labor and he believed that the division of labor is not spontaneous it is not based on the natural aptitude of the individual and most importantly that the choice of individual is not uh, guaranteed or not given in this division of so called labor because it does not depends on the aptitude of the person or the b- worth of the person but because he uh, w- he was born into a uh, caste he must perform certain uh, uh, function certain uh, duty that is associated to uh, that particular caste so it has nothing to do with uh, the aptitude of the individual or the choice of the individual where uh, uh, that individual is comfortable or efficient in doing such work or some other work so in this caste based uh, division of labor so to say the question of aptitude or choice is simply absent he also argued against the rigid caste boundaries he realized that each caste is assigned boundaries so that each one may at once be recognized as belonging to its particular caste so there is the, the rigidity in uh, in this caste system where everyone is his role or her role 
is fixed according to his caste and that started from brahmins it was followed by the uh, lower caste and further lower uh, down the orders and so every caste becomes a kind of closed groups uh, in itself and their role was uh, fixed and there is no possibility of ever coming out of such uh, uh, such conditions or such status so for a um, caste system to um, operate or to uh, shape the everyday life of indian it is the notion of purity and pollution which reproduced caste in everyday lives of uh, indians and in this regard ambedkar using bhandarkar's paper on foreign elements in the hindu population argues that considering the racial intermingling throughout the human history it is delusionary on the parts of many caste hindus to think about their caste as pure and free from all the foreign elements so this uh, basis of caste discrimination and caste hierarchy which rests on the notion of purity and pollution is uh, punctured by uh, ambedkar where he is using bhandarkar's paper on foreign elements in the hindu uh, population to argue that it is delusionary on the part of caste hindus to think of their uh, caste as pure and free from foreign elements considering the racial intermingling throughout the human history so he stated that hindu society was a collection of castes fixed in water tight compartments with graded hierarchy that made an associated corporate life virtually impossible so um, the argument um, against the caste and caste discrimination is uh, based on this uh, understanding that it obstruct the growth of associated corporate uh, life impossible in uh, hindu society because of this graded hierarchy and water tight compartmentalization of different castes and their uh, sectarian living so the morality and ethics or the norms of public life is shaped by the particular caste and uh, communal identity and not really a kind of uh, free associational uh, living which uh, can help in constructing a progressive uh, forward looking society in india so ambedkar argued that caste prevents hindu from forming a real society or nation where everyone each member is treated equally and caste has completely disorganized and demoralized the hindus he writes in every hindu the consciousness that exists is the consciousness of his caste and not the whole society as such so it divides and it divides not just in social and economic sense but also in psychological emotional and moral and ethical sense so the consciousness or the conscience that or ethics that a individual hindu carries is the conscience consciousness or the ethics of his particular caste or her particular caste and that is the reason why the hindus cannot be said to form a society or a nation so this is the biggest hindrance according to ambedkar in uh, forging a national identity or a collective identity among the hindus so this way ambedkar painfully stated the voice feature of caste system as anti social spirit it does not allow to form a collective identity so he argued that caste is a powerful weapon for preventing all reforms as the law gives each caste an autonomy to regulate its membership and punish dissenters with excommunication so, so the social boycott or excommunication was very prevalent in india to uh, uh, to uh, punish those dissenters and those who were arguing for uh, for uh, any uh, social reforms however at this point one also needs to remember the struggle against the caste uh, system or caste hierarchy or the priestly caste class is not new from uh, the very beginning the rise of buddhism or jainism then in medieval times the bhakti or sufi movement is also 
uh, in a sense a, a struggle or a assertion against the hierarchy or against the discrimination based on status, be it economics or social or religious. And there is, uh, this movement continued uh, and acquired more political form um, uh, uh, during the anti-colonial struggle and Ambedkar provided the foundational uh, uh, or the uh, intellectual foundation for such a struggle and also led many political movement for reforming or for annihilating such practices. So, in uh, his opinion caste in the hands of orthodox has been a powerful weapon therefore, for persecuting the reformers and killing all reforms. So, the caste must be annihilated for any social, economic and political uh, reforms to happen, because without such annihilation no reforms is possible. In fact, it provides a kind of weapon in the hands of orthodoxy to prohibit all kind of reforms or punish all kind of reformers. So, he believed that the real key to destroying caste is the rejection of Shastras. So, how to reform uh, destroy caste? He writes, the enemy you must grapple with is not the people who observe caste, but the Shastras, the Hindu text or religious text which teach them this religion of caste criticizing and ridiculing people for not interdining or intermarrying or occasional holding intercaste dinners and celebrating intercaste marriages is a futile method of achieving the desired end. Of course, he argued for intercaste marriage or intercaste only as a way for forward to fight caste based discrimination, but the real uh, remedy for uh, destroying caste or uh, religion of caste is uh, to destroy the belief in the sanctity of the Shastra. So, the millions of Hindu followers practice or uh, reproduce caste in their daily lives, believing in the Shastra's uh, sanction of such practices. And so, the religion is deeply embedded in their sense of caste based discrimination or the caste hierarchy. So, he uh, was arguing for the um, uh, fighting the uh, fighting the authority of the caste which provide sanction to such uh, caste practices. And there he differ from Gandhi and many congress leaders where they argued that the Hinduism does not really talk about caste and caste based discrimination. Essentially in Hinduism everyone is treated equally and everyone is um, uh, capable of realizing the um, uh, supreme self or to uh, connect with the supreme self or attain the uh, spiritual um, uh, heights with. So, there is no prohibition on the basis of caste and other things also. So, the connection between Hinduism and the caste system that Ambedkar uh, argued for was contested and critiqued by many uh, leaders including Gandhi. So, Ambedkar was critical of the attempt of social reforms by many contemporaries including Gandhi. He stated that reforms working for the removal of untouchability including Mahatma Gandhi do not seem to realize that the acts of the people or discriminatory acts of the people are merely the results of their beliefs inculcated in their minds by the Shastras and that people will not change their conduct until they cease to believe in the sanctity of the Shastras on which their conducts are founded. So, for Ambedkar those social reformers fighting for this uh, practices of caste or untouchability need to understand that the people and their belief in the caste based discrimination is based on their uh, belief in uh, the Shastras or uh, uh, the text which uh, gives sanction to such practices. So, unless that is um, uh, 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 destroyed or that is uh, fighted uh, uh, there cannot be change in the conduct of the people even when many reformers themselves in their individual life uh, free themselves from the uh, caste based discrimination, but for the millions their practices is governed by their uh, belief in the religious sanction of such caste practices. So, he also felt that the prohibition in the Hindu religion against intermarriage inter-dining, inter-drinking or social intercourse have been said to show people of unequal ranks their actual status in the society. So, the caste is something which actually produced 
and uh, reproduce in everyday life when on the question of marriage is the most important uh, way to maintain the class uh, caste exclusivity uh, to prevent any kind of intercourse between or among different uh, uh, castes so uh, uh, that is these bonds are symbols of inequality inter dining inter drinking or uh, inter caste marriages are the mechanism through which uh, the status of an individual is shown in the caste hindu society and he believed that the only intermarriage can lead to true bond to happen and not just inter drinking inter dining or just the formal interaction between and among the caste so he did consider inter caste marriages as the possible solution for the uh, development of true bonds among and different uh, caste in uh, hindu society and also to fight against the religious texts which uh, give authority to such caste discrimination so he believed that a true religion therefore one also needs to understand that he is not against a religion he is against so many people may have uh, this uh, sense that ambedkar is fighting the religion actually he is reinterpreting the religion which believes in social uh, harmony which believes in social equality which believes in true fellow feelings and the principle of fraternity liberty and uh, justice and equality so he believed that a true religion cultivate responsibility for one's action a religious act may not be a correct act but must at least be a responsible act to permit of uh, this responsibility religion must mainly be a matter of principles only it cannot be a matter of rules the moment it degenerates into rules it ceases to be religion as it kills responsibility which is the essence of truly religious act so he argued that hinduism is nothing but a set of rules that governs the everyday lives and not a matter of principle which is about the responsibility of individual towards self towards the other and not just a set of rules which governs or dictates the everyday lives and choices of the individual and he founded a lot of doctrinal cleavages within the hinduism and that's why he gradually developed a criticism against uh, the hinduism or sikhness identified the sikh practices within hinduism and uh, lost all hope in reforming such uh, religion also now to study this gandhi ambedkar debate we find that ambedkar studied gandhi very closely and especially the gandhian intervention the overall mass mobilization that gandhi led and therefore from 1920s when gandhi was leading the mass movement and giving a kind of combined um, 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 movement against the uh, british rule or the foreign rule and prime uh, priority of attaining political independence and then moving to um, social and other uh, 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 religious reforms uh, ambedkar uh, take a different route by engaging with the colonial uh, uh, ruler colon, uh, colonial administrator and uh, through uh, his uh, association with the colonial rule he was also trying to protect uh, the uh, interest of the untouchables or uh, the dalits at the same time when he was also uh, involved in many satyagraha or many uh, non violent agitational politics for the assertion of uh, self respect and uh, dignity of untouchables within the hindu society so these two figure gandhi and ambedkar is very interesting to understand their uh, visions and in fact ambedkar's views and his politics did influence gandhi's from 1930s till uh, his death in 1948 he continuously tried to eradicate untouchability or social discrimination based on caste and uh, he called them harijans and he was equally perhaps involved in this uh, uh, eradication of uh, caste and uh, uh, in the question of uh, untouchability as well so ambedkar studied gandhian intervention in nationalist movement very closely in his works like mr gandhi and the emancipation of the untouchables rana day gandhi and jinna and what congress and gandhi have done to the untouchables he critically examines the views of gandhi and gandhism on caste and its limitation limitation in their approach in solving the caste problems 
So, there is a lots of confusing or speculative arguments in the Gandhian which Ambedkar found and he provide claims to provide a solid or a kind of pragmatic political solution to the problem of caste and untouchability. So, initially Ambedkar was convinced about Gandhi's attempts to reform society and believed that this could bring about political reforms as well. However, he became skeptical towards Gandhi when he felt that Gandhi succumbed to the pressure of orthodoxy and placed the untouchables at the mercy of caste Hindus. So, the changing of heart or the kind of politics uh, Gandhi followed uh, led Ambedkar to question or interrogate his methods and politics about social reforms and especially uh, to protect the interest of untouchables or Dalits. So, this suspicion became much more clearer when he felt that Gandhi was trying to placate Muslims while isolating the untouchables during the round table conference and when they met in second round table conference from then on their uh, differences on caste question or the separate electorates for the untouchables becomes much more sharper. However, both of them took very conscious or uh, sincere effort to eradicate or to remove uh, remove uh, remove caste and untouchability from Hindu society. Ambedkar argued for the separate electorate for the untouchables because separate electorates guarantees that a representative enjoys the confidence of the electorate who are his special concern. However, a majority according to him cannot have separate electorate as it would be a permanent domination of the majority over the minority. The granting of a special electorates for the untouchables was unacceptable to Gandhi because he did not want further destruction or further uh, fragmentation of Hindu society. Uh, he wanted to consolidate or, uh, uh, or integrate the um, uh, excluded uh, community from the uh, fold of Hindu religion or Hinduism. So, uh, Gandhian notion of uh, Hindu or Hinduism is much more inclusive or uh, uh, about integrating differences or different communities or excluded communities within the fold of Hinduism. However, this uh, uh, communal award or uh, separate electorates for the untouchables was about providing separate electorates for the untouchables on the basis of their uh, identity, the caste identity which is uh, different from the uh, uh, majoritarian Hindu, uh, Hindu community. So, uh, this special ed electorates we have discussed these circumstances in our previous lecture which you can refer to. So, in 1932, when this award was granted to the untouchables largely because of Ambedkar's negotiation in all the three round table conference with the British, Gandhi started fast unto death and Ambedkar very reluctantly because of the political pressure or the social pressure yielded to such demand and accepted Gandhi's offer of separate electorates during the primary elections and increased number of reserve seats for the untouchables and joint electorates for them assembly seats. This is known as Pune pact and we have discussed also in our previous lecture how this pact does not satisfy or end the differences between Ambedkar and the Gandhi. So, uh, many of the followers uh, of Gandhi believe that Gandhi has yielded a lot to, uh, uh, to Ambedkar and Ambedkar believed cheated or his followers uh, felt cheated by the uh, uh, foreseeable. Uh, a compromise uh, uh, that uh, Gandhi uh, forced upon them. So, after the Pune pact, Ambedkar became a member of the executive committee of an anti-untouchability league that was formed, which is also named as Harjan Sevak Sangh, but he resigned from this body as he could not accept the strategies of the league to eradicate or annihilate caste. And after 1933, Ambedkar fought a relentless battle against Gandhi although they continue to share a number of concerns in common which we will discuss. So, from this time on Gandhi and Ambedkar pursued distinctly separate paths, Gandhi giving the name Harijan people of God to untouchables and from 1930s he is equally or perhaps more active in the social and economic sphere 
than in the political sphere. So Gandhi giving the name Harijan to untouchables and pleading with caste Hindus to abolish untouchables. So there is a kind of pleading or a kind of request for change in her to remove untouchability or abolish untouchability. For Ambedkar it was a political fight, it was a legal political fight which cannot be achieved merely by appeal or pleading to the caste Hindu who are uh, privileged or if you, who are beneficiary of such exploitative system of uh, caste discrimination or, un or untouchability. So therefore he formed a political party and the party attempted to abolish hereditary discrimination in village economic structure and also question the term Harizan. For Ambedkar, untouchable is someone who is broken or Marathi word as we have discussed for Dalit that he used is about someone who is broken and uh, broken in spirit to fight even for their self, uh, self uh, uh, respects. And this is the greatest contribution of Ambedkar perhaps to develop the consciousness or a sense of um, empowerment among those communities who were uh, in such a sub, uh, submissive state that they were not even conscious of their discrimination or or, humili uh, uh, or the hum constant uh, humiliation. So, uh, he was very critical of this term which is Gandhian term and that is Harijan. So, uh, one of the elements of Gandhi's attitude that disturbed Ambedkar the most was his idealization of Chatur Varna system or Varnasram Dharma in Gandhi. Gandhi believed that all people could be classed according to occupation of equal dignity within the four broad rubrics of Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaisya and Sudra and untouchables can be included uh, within the classical Varna which falls outside the Varna system should be included as Sudra. So for Gandhi these divisions between four uh, Varna and his differentiation between Varna and caste is something which uh, Ambedkar found very uh, confusing or very problematic uh, to understand uh, the problem. So, uh, for uh, however, for Gan uh, Gandhi such divisions are uh, not necessarily exploitative because it is about occupations, different occupations as such. So, uh, uh, so he thought these occupation of all kind are equal in worth and he has experimented in many of his ashrams, but largely outside his ashrams in the uh, everyday lives. Uh, the people uh, do not uh, uh, have same respect or mutual respect to all occupations. So, in India there is a kind of contempt towards uh, the low, uh, lower occupations and those who are involved in a particular occupations. Unlike Gandhian belief of equal respect or equal dignity to all occupation which is the uh, his justification for Varnasram or Chatur Varna system. Ambedkar found it very problematic, in fact disgusting uh, in his uh, assessment. So, this of course was unacceptable to Ambedkar and he argued that the reorganization of Hindu society on the basis of Chatur Varna is harmful and that the Hindu society must be re reorganized on a religious basis which recognizes the principle of liberty, equality and fraternity. So, Ambedkar studied the caste system and critically analyzed the justification it receives from Hindu scriptures. His thought does not deal merely with removal of untouchability which was but one part of anti-caste movement. He was also concerned with the overall annihilation of caste, not just the discrimination of the caste and reforming the caste, but the annihilation of caste is what uh, Ambedkar was aiming for or fighting for. Gandhi of course was in favor of abolition of caste based discrimination. In personal conduct too he did not practice caste as many uh, social reforms did not, but in their articulation or engagement they uh, substantially differ for Ambedkar rights kind of uh, understanding or approach to caste question. But he intended to emphasize more on the question of untouchability than on the caste system as a whole. Gandhi tends to search possible areas of cooperation and integration of the caste, whereas Ambedkar was trying and fighting for the annihilation of the caste. So, it is interesting to see how Gandhi and Ambedkar negotiated with tradition and their difference are sharp here as well. So, Gandhi engages in a creative dialogue with tradition. He tries to find out the element of truth in tradition and emphasize on those truths. In many cases, he attached new meanings to traditional symbols and he gives an impression that he is asking for nothing new in substance, 
but for the continuance of order. So, even the Satya, Ahinsa or the vocabulary that Gandhi used in a new way, inversing a lot of their logical or intellectual space in the tradition and he inverse that to suit the politics of the modern times or the mass mobilization that he was uh, he was leading. So, uh, Gandhi uh, tried to have a kind of uh, constructive dialogue with the tradition or find the elements of truth in, uh, in those tradition and trying to revive those truths in the modern uh, politics. Ambedkar on the other hand was in search of the ideology that justifies such exploitive systems such as caste. He felt that tradition was this ideology. Injustice based on caste could not have continued unless it was legitimized by a tradition. He also believed that the tradition of Hindu society was predominated by Brahmanical interests. As such, he could not ignore the role of tradition in situating caste as a moral code of Hindu society. This prompted Ambedkar to take a critical view of entire Hindu traditions or Hinduism which he also considered as the Brahmanical tradition. So, however, the difference in the structure of their discourse did not hide their common visions which they share and D. Nagaraja and many scholars in contemporary times is talking about the possible dialogue between Ambedkar and Gandhi on the question of social and uh, economic transformation especially for those uh, who are at the lowest level of caste hierarchy. Both believe that the social transformation could come about only by social action. So, the role of social actions or activities are as important as its articulation in uh, by the thinkers. So, therefore, they relied heavily on mobilizing people uh, or public opinion against such injustices based on caste. Social actions perceived by Gandhi and Ambedkar were for them both democratic. It was in the form of popular struggles, Gandhi many times appeared to be favoring compromises and avoiding conflict. So, the Gandhian politics was about popular struggle which many times favor compromises over conflict or confrontation. Ambedkar too is seen by many even by his followers as a supporter of non-violent protest or politics or agitational politics to assert uh, the self-respect or the dignity of uh, the untouchables. So, the Ambedkarite critique of Gandhi is centered on the letters passed unto death in opposition to Macdonald Award or separate electorates for Dalits. However, this act had two different criticisms. In the word of Gopal Guru, the critique leads to two opposing conception of this act. The male Ambedkarites look at Gandhi's fast as an act of unfairness in as much as it covers Ambedkar into accepting the Pune Pact. Conversely, female Ambedkarites positively assess the role of Ambedkar who in their judgment acted fairly in saving the life of Mahatma Gandhi signing the Pune Pact. So, there is a difference between two gender within the Ambedkarites movement about Gandhi and his role and his uh, dialogue with Ambedkar on the caste question. And therefore, Gandhi-Ambedkar debate uh, remains crucial to understand the political philosophy of these two great philosophers whose ideas help in shaping the public and political discourse in contemporary India. One should also understand that Gandhian and Ambedkarites discourse are not antithetical. It should be Ambedkarites. Both are concerned with the issue of emancipation as well as transformation of Hindu society from the clutches of caste and untouchability. So, despite of their differences, they were also arguing for um, uh, emancipation or liberation of society which is caste ridden or based on caste uh, uh, discriminations and untouchability which uh, prohibit uh, or which uh, weakens the bond or the uh, relationship between and among the uh, members of the same political community or uh, same nation. So, uh, this is all uh, on this uh, question of caste and uh, Gandhi Ambedkar debates, but finally one also needs to understand uh, in the contemporary politics the re-emergence of Ambedkar as an icon or use of Ambedkar as a symbol uh, for many political struggles which is also about social and economic transformation, social justice or egalitarian society. Uh, somewhere uh, 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 in this discourse, his focus on annihilation or eradication of caste is somewhere 
lost and there is now new kind of politics which is emerging where many uh, 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 caste is trying to uh, uh, fight for the recognition as a as, uh, OBC or SC or ST. So, the uh, politics in uh, post independence India has taken a different turn than perhaps Ambedkar was arguing for that is about eradication or annihilation of caste to create a society, to create a nation which would be based on the principle of equality, justice and liberty. But however, uh, Gandhi and Ambedkar and dialogue between the two remains crucial and uh, can provide the possible solution to uh, uh, create a post colonial society which would be much more egalitarian, much more uh, um, fair or just, so, just society uh, where the individual and the collective uh, um, uh, group or uh, uh, community can prosper or uh, uh, that will help in uh, strengthening the nation or its prosperity uh, as well. So, many scholars uh, uh, is also arguing about uh, this uh, possible uh, dialogue or revisiting the uh, uh, dialogue between Gandhi and Ambedkar to understand the problem of caste in even in contemporary India and how to fight it. So, on this question of caste in Ambedkar, you can refer to some of these texts. Most importantly is this original text by Ambedkar, which is Annihilation of Caste and also you can refer to some of the chapters from Valerian Roderick's The Essential Writings of B. R. Ambedkar and also some articles in EPW about Gandhi Ambedkar interface, when shall the twine meet or Ambedkar as a political philosopher. Other texts which we have been referring in this course is sources of Indian tradition or political thought in modern India. Also makers of modern India by Ramchandra Guha you can refer to and also understanding Ambedkar's contribution of construction of national movement by Gopal Guru. This text you can refer to. That is all for today. In the next class we are going to discuss, uh, discuss Ambedkar's views on uh, liberal democracy and constitutional morality that would be also the concluding lecture on Ambedkar. So, thanks for listening. Thank you all. Thank you.